the reason that we called it Ball Glove King, 100% just got to give the credit to uh, Will Taylor with the baseball bat bros. So I reached out to him and was like, hey, how much do you think it matters to like have a name? He didn't call his channel Will Taylor. He called himself the baseball bat bros. If someone is looking to buy a new glove, what's your number one go-to tip uh, for someone that's shopping for gloves? What should... Uh, what what's like your big thing that you always say this is what you should do first when looking for a glove yes man it is so personal so it's like kind of tough but if i had to say one feature welcome to the beyond the glove podcast presented by just gloves i'm your host ben loafman on our first ever episode, we recorded with Lindsay Neighbor from Rawling Sporting Goods. We discussed just how fantastic it can be to work within the sporting goods industry. But to some, working within the industry might seem a long ways away. However, Just Gloves can help shorten that distance for you. If you've got a vibrant social following and you incorporate gloves into what you show and feel like you could send some sales our way, then definitely head over to our website. You can find our affiliates page, justballgloves.com slash affiliates. And speaking of affiliates, that's going to lead great into our conversation for today. We're happy to welcome in Chris Bangert, also known as the Ball Glove King. Thanks for hopping on the call, Chris. What up? I'm happy to be here. Hey. Yeah, we're glad to have you. Let's so uh, first off, before we get started, uh, I just have to make a bit of a confession just so that everybody listening knows our host a little bit better. So I am an absolute baseball nerd, rat, whatever you want to call it. And um, just for example, the other day I had to go to the library with my kids and they got their little kid library books. And I also came out of the library with three books myself. I had a Jackie Robinson biography. I had a picture book of the history of baseball and then a coffee table book of Wrigley Field in Chicago. Oh, wow. And one of the best... <clears throat> One of the best things that I have come to find over working with you for like the past year and a half, Chris, is that it's pretty apparent that you love baseball. And uh, how, how would you echo my sentiment as well for, for love and baseball? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it's funny because I've always said like when I look at the grand scheme of everything, I'm like, well, yeah, I just really like baseball because I like think about my family um, and just different things like that. But no, you look at sports, man, and... Uh, Baseball is just my, it's by far the best. I think a lot of that has to do with uh, my family. Um, we kind of all bond over it. Baseball is just, it's a solid sport, man. It's fun. Yeah. No, I love it. Whenever anybody, anybody complains about it moving too slow, it's like you just, I he I've heard so many people talk, yeah. it just gives you so much time to think and just really soak it in. Doesn't maybe have all the, the cool, awesome action that maybe like football or basketball has, but just as far as sitting down and enjoying it, there's there's nothing better. So yeah. what is your first memory of uh, just sitting like as a kid where you're just like, I love this game so much. When did that when did that happen for you? I'd split it into like two categories. So one, I think fourth grade, we won the championship. And this is just like Little League Baseball. I thought it was so cool. Um, <laughs> and that was like me being like, whoa, I'm good at something. So fell in love with that, thought that was awesome. And then like kind of as I was growing, I just hearing from my dad, you know, he sounded like he was really good at baseball. <laughs> and uh, if he's telling me true stories. <laughs> and so it definitely, that was like something I was like, I, it's the way me and my dad can connect. And it was just the thing that made it more important to me. So, yeah. I liked your story there talking about, uh, talking about winning as a, as a fourth grader. Yeah. I really hope my children are too young at this point to have already started playing like formal baseball. But when you said that, the first thing that came to my mind was me after playing a game when I was little, they would come out with like a huge carton of Coke, like cherry Cokes for people to have after the game. Yeah, and, you know, man. nowadays we're so worried about health and things yeah, like that right. as we uh, as we play our sports. But back then the parents were just like, have a, have a yes, you finished, dude, have a soda. <laughs> That is so true. I mean, so like we have we have a couple young ones, and if we're we can't share snacks anymore, dude. Like, if we have like some like granola bars, you would think that's so innocent. No, nah, we can't. Um, we got to keep it to ourselves. Only <laughs> our kid can eat it. And so, dude, those were great memories. Like, there's moms who would pack up 
like lunch bags for every kid. Like you have Oreos, <laughs> Chips Ahoy, Cheez Its, a drink. Those were the days, man. Mm -hmm. No, that's awesome. Yep, great memories. So, and you kind of alluded to it a little bit earlier. Kind of mentioned your dad and your family. You're one of eight kids growing, yeah. and you you grew up in Chicago, correct? Yeah, yeah. We're in the good old suburbs of Chicago. And uh, man, yeah. So one of eight, def definitely a fan. Definitely a fan. I love it. Uh, wouldn't have it any other way. And I, I happen to be in the middle of that. I'm like the fourth kid. And it's been a blast so far, and we are very close still. So it's something I like to, I don't know. I hope it stays that way forever. We'll see. There you go. Is everybody, is everybody in Chicago still? Somehow, yes. Somehow, yes. Everybody's, not only are we all in Chicago, but we're all in the same town as of now still, which is crazy. So I imagine as you're growing up, you guys probably had some pretty epic games of baseball in the backyard uh were you uh were you kind of the organizer of that or how did uh how did all that shake out yeah definitely dude so like awesome games and it was actually in the front yard we had the most incredible setup and it's where my parents live still so we definitely get out there every once in a while um my like extremely kind and patient neighbors growing up just loved that we were outside and so their roof was like facing our house and it was the home run like if you hit the shingles it's a home run and so they told us they're like we don't care uh just keep going keep having fun we're glad you're outside and so we just pelted their house man um but that was awesome so we had front yard baseball and yeah i was often the one begging to just keep playing because i had like a pretty big gap between my older brothers and so i was constantly begging hey, let's go play let's go play and uh I'd yank them out there pretty often. There you go. So growing up, you got a big family. You guys are playing baseball in the front yard. You're in Chicago. One might think that you were a Chicago Cubs fan. Were you guys Cubs fans? Uh, yeah, you know what's funny? It's like maybe twice ever I've been asked if I'm a Sox fan. Okay. <laughs> um, constantly asked if I'm a Cubs fan. Uh, so, yeah, I am a St. Louis Cardinals fan. And so, yeah, it's just where my parents are from, both like Southern Illinois, grow up a Cardinals fan, love being a Cardinals fan. I would say it's like the best organization that you can root for. Um, super consistent, except for last <laughs> year. Uh, it was rough. We should have been way better. But um, yeah, man, Cardinal fan all the way. So were you, you were, I always think of, we live in Kansas City, so the Chiefs are pretty good right now at football. And yeah. But growing up, there was always one kid that was always a Broncos fan. And like every school, it seemed like, that I went to. Yeah. Were you that? You were in Chicago. Is there always that that one kid that's the Cardinals fan in, in like yeah. every school? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there's – it's sort of like when you're small in numbers, when you find another, you're like automatically friends, you know? Um, it's kind of like one of those things. And whenever you see a guy with a Cardinal hat on, you kind of just like – but definitely <laughs> um my teachers growing up all like to like kind of tease and make fun of me that kind of a thing that's kind of how it was uh -huh. and i feel like that's actually like probably a misconception that most of us have isn't for like the state of illinois chicago's in like the very northern part and yeah the southern half of illinois is actually a lot of cardinals fans isn't Ton. it yeah yeah so once you get down there um you're gonna have more cardinal fans than anything but there's your fair share of Cubs fans. Not again, not that many Sox fans. Um, but yeah, man, <laughs> it's like m when my dad grew up just like five hours south. That's not that far. Way like almost everybody's a Cardinal fan. It probably helps that like the Cardinals have been good and competitive, and for a long time the Cubs just weren't. No, that's just how it goes. So yeah. So we kind of and we've been discussing your your love of baseball, and um, that definitely leads into what you're doing today. And I'm going to try to describe Absolutely. what I think it is that you do. These are going to be my words, so <laughs> like be this. sure to correct me. But the way that I would describe it is I would say that you are a content creator focused on providing enjoyable baseball glove-related content and helping players, parents, and enthusiasts make informed glove purchases. Would you? Would that be the correct way to describe that, what you do? That was my job resume. Like that's what would be on a job resume. That was great. <laughs> I liked the way you worded that. I've definitely never worded it that cleanly. Uh, it usually takes a whole conversation for me to explain it to someone. Um, especially if they're older, it's harder. <laughs> 
That's yes, pretty good. I can imagine. That's uh, that's hilarious. You'll you'll laugh. I had to set this up on like I had to color code it so that I said all of the right things correctly to describe it. <laughs> but you were talking about describing to old people, uh, older older folks. Yeah. So if you're caught in an elevator with someone and they ask you what you do, how would you, how would you dis- how do you usually go about describing uh, what what it is you do for a living now? Yeah, yeah. So start off by saying I make YouTube videos because I think nowadays doesn't even matter the age everyone has some kind of like understanding of youtube at this point and then i pretty much say i'm like i review gloves and my ultimate goal is to make sure that kids and parents don't buy bad gloves that usually gets the point across and then the terrible thing is when they ask how do you make money and then it's just like a that you can't explain that quickly it's a confusing conversation so Mm-hmm. No, I can imagine. Uh, I can imagine telling a like a, a grandparent having to explain to them and yes, them just dude. you do what? Yeah, saying <laughs> they're proud of me, but they're That's also just like concerned. They're like, "What do you? What do you mean? <laughs> you just get money?" That's great. That's so funny. Uh, but and, and I know for for so this is what you do now, and like you're really well known amongst the uh, the baseball baseball glove community. But is this? I, you've had to have had a job before. What is it that you did before you full time started doing uh, the Ball Glove King? Yeah, man. Uh, so I probably what I would call like one of my first jobs was actually Menards um, hardware store. Loved it. Uh, still shop there consistently. <laughs> there you go. And then uh, I was actually this. I was a medical technician. Okay. Um, that sounds way fancier than it actually is. But pretty much, I was helping people who. It's either like an old lady who needs a knee replacement or this like young kid who tore his ACL. And so I was helping them, giving them this like medical equipment that basically helps them throughout their recovery. And so it was fun because of how many people I met, but you know, no passion within the work or anything like that. It was just a job. Oh, that's cool. It's, It's just wild to think, you know, all the things that we do before we get to kind of do our dream job and that sort of stuff. And it's cool that you were yeah. able to <clears throat> do that and kind of be on the front lines of actually helping people. And in some ways yeah. you were doing, you were helping people before with your medical technician and you're doing it now just in a little different community. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Which is good. I, I think I'm generally a people person. I like being around people, having conversation. And so I miss it because I'm often alone <laughs> editing, making videos but there, I have to remind myself, there are real people watching these videos. And when I, when I successfully remind myself that, it's super helpful. Super, super helpful. Yeah. Plus, you do a great job. It's very entertaining as well. So, um, so I was looking <laughs> Thanks, back. As, yeah, absolutely. So I was looking back at your, uh, just kind of your YouTube channel. And uh, I scrolled through all the way down to the bottom. And I made it to November 19th. 2019. So yeah. I believe that you were probably either working at Menards or the medical technician at this time. But yeah, you unveiled a what is in my baseball bag video for everybody to watch. Is that is it fair to say that that is ground zero of uh, of the ball glove king? Dude. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, it's hard to look back at those. I should because I think I haven't done that in probably a good two years. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, I just basically what happened was like my wife was like, "You why you don't play baseball <laughs> right now? Why do you have all this?" And I was like, "That's a good point. That's a good point." <laughs> so yeah, man, that's crazy. It's really fun to think back on. I think when this ends, I'm gonna go watch that. I'm gonna go watch it. November nineteenth. That's coming up, dude. I'm gonna have like an anniversary. You should crazy. absolutely. Um, so if you were to describe, so it sounds like you basically gave us the origin story. Was it simply that? You had a lot of gloves and uh, your wife gave you the nudge and you're like, all right, I guess I got to I got to do something yes. with these. Make them uh, make them pay rent for us or something like that. Yeah, for real, dude. Yeah. So um, hobbies are often expensive. And this was uh, so I probably had maybe 20 up to maybe 30 or something like that gloves. And yeah, my wife was definitely like, come on, you're a loser. What are you doing? Like, why do you <laughs> why are you collecting all this and just hitting it in the basement, you know, I'm just down there. And so, yeah, she definitely ever, like, she knew I'd always wanted to do something with YouTube. And so she definitely gave me a little bit of an extra nudge, encouragement. And uh, yeah, man, I, I had this passion of gloves. 
had a lot of gloves and I had no one to share it with, man. So it was super helpful and healthy to go find that audience. And to begin with, man, it was just, all I was doing was searching for more people like me. That's it. Yeah. No, that's, that's, I like that you mentioned that just having more people to talk about. One of the best things that I've had getting to know you over the last year and a half is that a lot of times I don't even have someone that I can just go chat with about nerdy glove things. And that's been one of the best things yeah. uh, with us having you as one of our affiliates is it was like, okay, every couple of weeks I get to go talk with Chris and we get to nerd out on gloves. So, uh, and like those, those questions that I'm sitting there at night thinking about, and I was like, nobody, this question will not land with yes. anybody except for Chris. So I uh, no, that's, I, I love that you express so that funny. sentiment. So, and then as well, you, you mentioned that your wife, Jenny, she was giving you a hard time at first for having so many gloves, but I feel like you've put up, she's got her own glove now or, or a few gloves, I think, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. She has her own. If I was really, if I didn't, I would just keep getting her gloves. Cause like, it's still fun for me. <laughs> Uh, maybe that's like when you get someone a gift, but like, really it's for you. Mm -hmm. Um, I got you this car that I really wanted. Um, but dude, yeah. So she has one at this point. It's fun. She, uh, she likes to kind of nag me about this kind of stuff, but I'm like, Hey man, I'm working. <laughs> I just get to kind of enjoy it. That's funny. And then, so kind of going back to that first ever video. So when you unleash, uh, not unleashed, unveiled that video, posted it, whatever the word is, did were you the ball glove king? Was that did was that your name right there at the beginning, or did the ball glove king name did he eventually become that? But it was just like Chris's cool gloves or something yeah. like that. Yeah, no, that's that is great. So yeah, um, every once in a while I get a comment, something along the lines of, "Remember the Chris Banger slash basement days?" Um, yeah, we were just in a basement uh, that it was just called Chris Banger. It's my name. I think a lot of people don't know that. Uh -huh. You know, I just refer to Ball Glove King and get into the video. It is. Um, yeah, man, that's wild. Uh, I'm actually just going to keep going. The reason that we called it Ball Glove King, 100% just got to give the credit to uh, Will Taylor with the baseball bat bros. So I reached out to him and was like, hey, how much do you think it matters to like have a name? He didn't call his channel Will Taylor called himself the baseball bat bros and he basically said i credit like something like 60 percent of our success to the name alone just super easy to understand you know these guys do baseball bats and so yeah that's kind of what that stemmed from and uh ball glove king is what we went with and now my least favorite thing in the world is when people call me that because it sounds so like prideful i call myself a king <laughs> so, oh, i hate it I can. I love that. It's awesome when people do see me, but I'm like, call me Chris. Just call me Chris, or Glove Guy. Glove Guy. That's funny. They. Uh, I, I like Ball Glove King because you know it's like. Obviously, you don't think you're like the king if if you've watched any of your videos or met you for any like amount of minutes. Uh, you're like, okay, this is clearly kind of a joke. So I I think it fits pretty well. Yeah. So no, you you do a good job. Yeah, well, I, I I'm glad. I'm glad that it's delivering. <laughs> that's funny. Um. But yeah. So. November 19th, that was like almost four years ago when we're talking now. And so now you've made a lot of videos since then. As you go back through all the videos that, do you know how many, how many have you put up? Do you have the exact number? Sorry. Dude, I don't. I really should. It's got to be uh, maybe only like a little bit over 100 or something like that. Uh, yeah, man. There's been a lot, of, a lot of gloves within all those videos. Nice. And what's your most favorite, like... For you, it's a little bit different. Like as a viewer, it's like, oh, I liked watching that one the most. But for you, what was your glove, your yeah. glove video that you, that you shot that was like the most fun for you to for you to shoot? Um, one that sticks out for sure, O'Neill Cruz. So when I filmed that video, I was definitely excited about it and thought it was going to do well because he's got this unique glove playing shortstop with a glove that's arguably the size for an outfield glove, um, like over 12 inches. And he puts tape on the fingers for some reason. Just It was all adding up. This is so weird. This is so weird. The guy himself is like 6'7". And so I was really excited about it. And that was my first video that ever like landed and kind of quickly like just performed well. Um, I don't remember what it's at at this point. Um, maybe seven, six, seven hundred thousand or something like that. Hopefully, I'm not wrong. Otherwise, I'll sound like an idiot. 
But, uh, but yeah, I think that reached like 100,000 in the first month. And then after a few months, it was like at 300,000. And so that was cool. That was exciting because I was like, I, you know, I care so much about gloves and want to inform people. But I've always had this idea that, you know, not that many people might want to learn about gloves. It's like a pretty small audience. Um, and so that was cool to be able to like share with like the masses. That was exciting. Nice. I feel like you've always done a really good job with those pro player pro player videos. Um, for me personally, yeah, those are fun. Man. My favorite video that you've done is when you did the Nolan Arenado video and just explained. Yeah, I had never. <laughs> I want to use the word for me. That was a transcendent video <laughs> for me in regard to learning about gloves because it changed. That's a great word. How I thought about because I like a little bit bigger, like 11 three quarter inch or 12 inch glove. And I think in that video you described, it's like a third baseman glove is literally there just to stop the ball. And um, he has pulls yes. his fingers way apart on, so I, I got a glove sitting yeah. here. He pulls the fingers way apart. This is not my game glove. Yeah. But um, so I started doing that on mine. And now if I ever buy another glove in the future, like that is how I am going to break in my glove. That was that is, it was, it was not only a cool video to watch, but it was extremely yes, helpful dude. as well. So, oh, you got one there? Yeah, but no, yeah, you're right. I mean, we always have this idea that like people, because people curl fingers in because your thought is when the ball goes in, you want it to stay in. Mm -hmm. But this Nolan Aronado break in is no, like spread this thing out. It's almost like he would rather the ball hit his glove and drop to the ground because he's still going to pick it up and throw mm -hmm. it out. At third base, especially, this makes a lot of sense. Um, and it's funny you say that because, like, my process of making the video, I, kind of a similar experience. I was like, wow, this is, like, more people should know this. Mm -hmm. um, third baseman specifically, man, yeah, like, your mentality should be stop the ball. Mm -hmm. Especially at third. I mean, that's the difference between a double or a single, uh, single or an out. And so it's pretty cool stuff. Yeah, no, that's awesome. It's, I, you mentioned there, like, curling it in the fingers. It, it's like, you always do, like, yeah. that was how my dad broke it in, so I'm going to curl it in. It's going to be, like, yes. a tiny little, but it Ugh. it is cool to see that there's a little <laughs> oh. more, you can add a little more cerebral thought to it than just that. So, um, Yeah. But, yeah, so you mentioned you, you're you thinking, in regard to your total count of videos, you're at about over 100 or so right now. And is there, like... got to be, like, right over Just 100. so, yeah. So is there any, from your videos, um, I met, and you get a lot of fan interaction with comments and things like that on your videos. Is there one moment that, or like one moment that you're experienced from posting a video uh, that just resonates with you that was like super cool, you helped someone out or something like that, or someone left you, left you a real positive note or anything like that? I think the coolest ones, which I uh, am consistently getting, which is incredible, um, is the ones where it's a father and son. It's like, dad, either the son, I think it's really cool when the son specifically says, me and my dad watch you, we love you, blah, 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 thank you, you helped me get this glove, something along those lines. But when it's me and my dad, or me and my son, I think that's the coolest. <laughs> Because a lot of the YouTubers that I really enjoy, <laughs> I probably wouldn't watch with my dad, man. <laughs> Just like super vulgar um, and different things like that. And so it makes me like super, it's it's extremely rewarding feeling to just be honest. When you know that like, wow, that's so cool. There's a dad and a son out there bonding over baseball gloves. Like that's nice. awesome. That is cool for you, you to be a part of that. And um, just kind of for, yeah. along with like you get you get to hear about all these cool cool experiences uh, that you've created for people. Um, you've also been afforded the opportunity to, to like kind of represent some, some cool, cool brands um, and even be able to meet some cool people kind of starting off with that. Yeah. Um, I think currently okay, you're kind of, you're helping represent uh, or with ball players bomb. Are you doing something with them right now? Yes, dude. Nice. Yes. Ball players bomb. I, uh, it's like this epiphany. So just like starting to use it, I was like, okay, I, I like this stuff. And then I use our glove cleaner and I'm like, this is amazing. It, this stuff is like legit made in the US. Like the owner makes the stuff in his garage. Uh, oh, here, okay. The glove conditioner. Oh, also, I like the branding, but ball players bomb. Oh yeah. Only negative I could possibly say about it is that you want to be careful when you're using it. You don't just like lather a ton on but you use it lightly 
and it is effective. My thing is like, you know how chapstick, how many times, Ben, have you ever used chapstick and it actually like used it until it's gone in the tube? I can give you a positive, a, I'm positive of this number zero times that, uh, <laughs> exactly. That's, that's how this stuff is. That's what's exciting to me. Uh, it's just like cool. Like the way that it's like this kind of like waxy material, the glove clamp, I don't even know, dude. It's been fun to use. It's exciting because like, you know, when you have something really good, there's never like an ill will to like sharing yeah. it with someone. It's just only good. That's kind of how I feel. So it's been exciting. Um, I love it. The fact that it's like here in the U.S. makes it way cooler, and uh, it's been effective. I really like for ball players, bomb. They are. What you mentioned the cleaner. Yeah. The for forever we've known about conditioners, and they'll con- you know you can condition the leather, make yeah. it. But I like the cleaner because sometimes you put on the conditioner, and it's like, well, it kind of darkened the leather and kind of changed how it looks. But the cleaner does a little bit, and correct me if I'm wrong, the cleaner does a little bit better job of like actually like cleaning out all of the like dirt off the surface and somewhat restoring the glove to how it looked kind of when you first bought it, correct? Yes, dude. Yeah, so that's why I've been excited about the cleaner. Um, sure, it does smell really good, but it works. And it too lasts a really long time. It, you can imagine, it's like a bar of soap in a tin can. Just take like a toothbrush and rub it around. And then clean your glove. It's been super effective. Just been loving it. Um, yeah, man. It is cool. Because, like, when you have, like, your, tr- like, true, like, favorite glove, it it's pretty satisfying to clean it up. It's not, like, a chore. It's more so, like, a f- fun thing to do. Mm-hmm. The other thing that's cool, there's a lot of people have probably seen this, but there's great videos out there of people using glove cleaners. It's so satisfying because you get a little bit of the water, and usually it's, like, a toothbrush brush that you use to wipe it down and then they yeah. so and it gets all sudsy so you, your glove yes. you're doing it and yes, it gets a little dude. sudsy and then you wipe it off it's uh pretty uh, i'm telling you it's like actually yeah. fun <laughs> <laughs> yes for sure all right so you've been able to represent some cool glove brands like ball players bomb but you've also had the opportunity to meet some pretty cool people and you kind of mentioned him a little bit earlier but the baseball bat bros will taylor yeah he's kind of been like a little bit of a mentor to you right definitely 110 percent Will's uh, really an incredible dude. Um, man, like I reached out to him earlier, like I said, probably a thousand subscribers or something like that. Uh, he took the time to help me out. And uh, from that point on, I mean, not long after that, he was willing to just hop on a phone call, help me out. Uh, I think a big reason that is, is we had a very similar belief is I want to review a baseball product and I don't want any baseball company within the glove world and for him, the bat world, to give me money because then it's like not a true review and so that's still something for the both of us that's like very true so anyway that was like what probably kind of rooted that relationship and he's just been so awesome um super helpful to me and so yeah man really really blessed by uh will and his wisdom nice it's fantastic we uh he works with us on our just bad side of the house as well and i know that they uh really enjoy that relationship a lot so moving forward uh, is there anything that you can give us a sneak peek for uh, regarding the Ball Glove King, uh, like projects, events, or collaborations that you got coming up this winter or spring? Yeah, man. So here's what I will say. This winter, we're excited. We're going to be doing our reviews, of course, uh, a little bit more entertainment, just like fun videos that just in this baseball world. I'm not talking me just like vlogging random vlogs, uh, some really cool planned out stuff. And then the spring, super stoked for spring. Uh, I think the spring is going to be like a game changer for our channel in general. Uh, We have some really cool stuff involved, like coming up. Like Will, he's going to be in one of our videos coming up. Really pumped about that video. I wish I could tell you more, but I can't. I just can't. Um, Spring is going to be really cool. Nice. No, we're looking forward to it. No, that's going to be awesome. It sounds like there's a lot of good plans coming on. So, Um, so hearkening back once again, we're going back to that original video. And uh, you had a couch full of gloves with you. And you're you're obviously yeah. well known, as you talked about, for that glove collection. Within that collection that you had on that couch and what you still have today, do you have your first glove that you uh, that you ever owned? <sighs> um, yeah, so I do. Um, my first glove that, like, I ever considered mine, you know, mm-hmm. I actually ended up letting my nephew use it a little bit this year. Uh, it's just like Louisville Slugger, TPX, and just super beat up. Absolute pancake, kind of like everybody's first glove. And so, (laughs) yeah, it's, it's fun to see that it's like getting used still. And then, um, 
Yeah, there, there's. I have like a second first glove where I consider it, it's like the first glove I bought, and it's like what really mm-hmm. gave me this like, whoa, I can buy a glove, break it in, use it, shape it how I want. And uh, that was actually also a Louisville Slugger. It was this like icon series. It actually is a Louisville Slugger that feels quite a bit like a Nakona. And so that's really what started that like passion for just the break in and like use of a baseball glove. And I still have that one. It's exciting. Where is it? It might be back here. I don't know. We've got like <laughs> 60 gloves. I don't, probably more than 60. No, that's anyway. awesome. I, uh, I actually, just to, uh, to hit home for those watching on the, the YouTube, I have what I consider like my first first glove that I was like, okay, this is my glove. It's not a hand me down. The only reason I got it was because my uh, my parents or I lost my glove, so my parents were willing to buy this one for me. I was like nine years old, and this thing is huge. It's like twelve and a half inches. Got the I don't know if you can see it there, but it's got the King that's, Griffey King Griffey Junior uh, signature in there. Um, but no, it's also if you can also see as well, my Let's parents go. put our. Uh, put our phone number don't call that number it's still active but uh they they put our name and phone number on there so it was uh just awesome it's cool when when you're able to remember those things hopefully i'll give it give it to one of my kids someday but um but no that's uh it's been fun just keeping that one with me the whole way so um it's funny as i i look at your your big uh your big collection of gloves i uh i like to think of myself as like a a minimalist in regard to the amount of things i keep yeah my wife may not agree with me <laughs> but uh but i've always wondered this does the collection ever become a little weary uh just having so so many clothes that you got to tote with you everywhere yes yes so like this morning i just like struggled to get into the office because i have this cardboard box that is like stacked to the point where i can't see um, and so it's a good problem to have, but yeah, just carrying the gloves with you. Um, it's really fun to make videos where we do projects where it's like, Hey, we're going to take eight gloves and compare them to each other. Um, but yeah, lugging them around is sometimes a pain in the butt. And I, my wife is the one who is always reminding me that they don't belong in the house and that they should stay in the office. And That's so, yeah, funny. they, they get in the way for sure, man. <laughs> That's funny. You could make some pretty impressive like pie charts of like your gloves, like by brand and then by like web yes, or uh, like a length and that sort of stuff. That's I feel fun. like I've that would be I've never thought pretty... about that. You should, you should do that for a uh, little, little winter content. You're like uh, pie charts regarding my, uh, my glove yeah. collection, but <laughs> making, yeah, really break it down into like a science. So what's your, uh, what's your favorite way that you found to uh, like, uh, offload or give away a glove or something like that definitely in person's fun that's the truth in person is fun uh it's exciting seeing people just like get to run away with their glove and you know show like their teammates and stuff but it's also fun um i do get quite a lot of messages saying can i have a free glove (laughs) um but every once in a while you get like a message where they're not asking for a free glove but they do give a little bit of like insight into their situation um, and the ones that feel genuine to me, where it's not like they're trying to get a free glove, uh, th- that's pretty fun. Um, like coming across this kid, Henry, man, he was just making a lemonade stand, trying to like save money to buy a glove. So that was really cool to be able to send him. And that was because of you guys. We were oh. able to send him this like awesome, beautiful A2K, su- just super cool. Stuff like that's so just a blast. Yeah, that was really cool. I enjoyed being allowing us to be a part of that giveaway. That was definitely fun. That was cool. So, and as you kind of mentioned, so not everybody's going to be the lucky recipient of a free ball glove. Yeah, right. So if someone is looking to buy a new glove, what's your number one go-to tip uh, for someone that's shopping for gloves? What should, uh, what, what's like your big thing that you always say, this is what you should do first when looking for a glove? Yes, man. It is so personal. So it's like kind of tough. But if I had to say one feature, it's the pattern. And so for anyone who doesn't know, that means like the shape of the glove. The pattern would include like how the glove closes. Is it even? Is it hinge, one hinge? And so you want to figure out by using your glove and then looking at everyone on your team. Look at their glove. Ask to play catch with it. Boom, catch a couple with it. Figure out like what it is that you like and then you want to try to find the pattern. And this isn't just to like name drop myself, but I do believe the best place to go right now to find out what pattern you might like is just binge watch my channel, man. Cause like, there's not really any other content out there right now that's going to help you figure out what's the best glove for me. So if you binge and watch my channel, you'll see the different types of break-ins, 
watching like how pro players break in gloves is also really interesting because they they know what they're doing so man the pattern and figuring out what's the shape you like and then after that you know the type of leather and you just have to figure out the cost that you're willing to spend that's all just personal between you you can just figure that on your own it's easy but yeah nice no, that's perfect. And then as well, I'll add a little plug for Jess Gloves as well. We are starting to add patterns to Jeez. our website. So if you guys want as well, we do have some of the big ones from like Wilson and Rawlings, um, particularly like your 1786 from Wilson, your 200 pattern from Rawlings. Yes. So you guys can always use those to help shop Which too. Which is huge. Because so. like I keep saying this, when you get a 1786 from Wilson and you just love the glove, you can just go get another 1786 from Wilson, different colorway, different whatever, customize it or something. It's so easy. So the fact that you guys added the patterns, I mean, that was huge. That's awesome. I think that's ahead of the game. So I, I was excited about that. I was really excited about that. I think that's something smaller companies need to learn how to come up with a pattern and then like stick to it. Make a good pattern and stick to it so that when people buy your glove again, they're excited because it feels just like they're one from like five years ago. Nice, and that's your saying for like uh, smaller, like smaller glove companies out there that yeah, are trying to break in right brands, now. Smaller glove smaller glove companies. They need to learn the importance of the Pro 200 pattern, mm -hmm. the 1786, and so on. Nice. No, that's awesome. That's a uh, great advice. So, kind of looking at you know, you mentioned the new new glove companies and. Um, and the, we, we have our, our companies that have been around for forever. We got our Wilson, our Rawlings. Um, yeah. When you see the ball glove industry as a whole, what do you think is like the most significant innovation that you've seen like throughout, let's say 150 years that ball glove has been around? What do you think is the biggest thing, that biggest innovation that gloves have made? Okay, T two answers. Okay. One is like the easy answer, and that's in like maybe it was the 70s when I think Wilson is kind of responsible for making the traditional baseball glove. Like what we have today, where the ball gets trapped behind the thumb and the pinky. Mm -hmm. Before that, we sort of had all these wacky like oven mitts and these just big, just random leather, just kind of with padding. Mm -hmm. Um, that was like easily, that's mm -hmm. the biggest difference by far, by far. That's kind of a boring answer in my opinion. Um, I would say one of the next things up, it's actually the use of rubber or this plastic, whatever <laughs> you want to call that. And so Rev one X and like super skin. And then there's some other ones like speed shell kind of counts, hyper shell, these, these different types of like rubber materials that actually, I think make a bigger difference than something like mesh. Uh, mesh is not durable enough mm -hmm. and it often like literally rips or tears mm -hmm. whereas like Wilson's super skin it effectively makes the glove a little bit lighter it's easier to break in that stuff doesn't really like wear down it's it's pretty impressive it's pretty cool I think the Rev 1X is following suit which is pretty cool like I'm I'm a really big fan of fielding with the Rev 1X it's a very different experience than just like your typical glove mm -hmm. so Nice. No, that's awesome. Yeah, no, you got them both knocked out. You got the one throughout the history of gloves and then also for recent history too. So I love Modern, it. Modern, yeah. Nice. Well, thanks for hopping in with us today, Chris. Uh, this has been fantastic. So before we let you go, though, we're going to do three yeah. strikes. So at the end of all our interviews, okay. we give our uh, we give our guests three questions. Uh, you get 20 seconds like the pitch clock uh, to, to answer. So uh, we'll go up for our, our first pitch here. So when playing slow pitch softball, should one wear jorts or athletic shorts? Jorts, dude, jorts. Yeah. <laughs> Unless they're bog looking shorts, then maybe. That's right. We should add a little plug in here for you, everyone. If you haven't, be sure to go over to, is it just bogloveking.com? Heck yeah, it's easy, baby. Yeah. Bogloveking.com. I like keeping the logo simple. Um, this is over 20 seconds, but yeah, go, go to bogloveking.com. You're good. Perfect. Um, I, I am proud of our merch line because it's I think it's slick. I think it's cool. And I think it's easy to wear with like anything else. You know, if something's a little overly complicated, uh, it feels weird wearing like Nike socks with Adidas shoes. <laughs> That's what I want to avoid. <laughs> that feeling. Nice. That's funny. OK, pitch number two here. So you're creating a custom glove from scratch. You have four options that you can choose from. What's your length going to be? Eleven and a half. Web. 
tan, something in the tan. Spectrum, Ooh, yeah. pretty traditional there. And then stiffness. I, I gotta go just like traditional. Um, not too stiff, but not so soft. Nice. There you go. Yeah. I'd always, if I'm breaking in a glove, I'm like, make it rock. That's like how yeah, I, yeah. I always want to super stiff, but, um, okay. And then pitch number three here. What other baseball channel do we need to be following on YouTube besides Ball Glove King? It will, we'll, besides Ball Glove King and Baseball Bat Bros, since we've mentioned them yeah. already. Who okay, else yeah. should we be following? Uh, easy for sure one. Disarm, man. Entertainment videos. like Disarm is in another realm uh, when it comes to the quality content that he's making. It's awesome. Okay. And then after that, I mean, I would say watch out for youth prospects. I think they're going to be improving their quality of videos over the next like year or so. So that's cool. That's cool. nice. Perfect. Well, that's awesome. Chris, thank you for joining us today. It was a great conversation. Um, everybody definitely be sure to hit up ballgloveking.com uh, to get his gear and then also check him out on YouTube. Uh, he's got a great Instagram account, TikTok too. So thank you, Chris, for joining us. Yeah, man. Thanks. And uh, yep. over on ballgloveking.com, you got the glove list. Man, that's, I point people to it all the time. If you're looking for a glove, go check out the glove list. It's easy, informative. Boom. Perfect. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, thanks, guys. See you, man. Thank you for watching this episode of Beyond the Glove podcast. If you have any comments or suggestions for a future episode, be sure to go ahead and throw it down below in the comments. And as well, be sure to subscribe to our channel and also to like this video. Have a great day.